For today's lesson, you should be looking at the food webs worksheet. I'd like you to write your name at the top before we get started. Then we're going to read through the text below and design a food web based on the information we learn from the words. Then we're going to answer some questions on the back using the food web that you designed. As we read, we're going to think about where each species might belong in the food web and write it in the appropriate section of the table at the bottom of this page. If you go to look at the bottom of this page, you'll see that there's a place for you to write producers, primary consumers, secondary consumers, and anything higher than that. So we want to think about those things as we're reading through the text. Okay, so the Cedar River begins in the Cascade Mountains. It starts with several smaller creeks that join together to form one large river. As it winds its way down from the mountains to the city of Renton, more and more water is added. It flows higher in the winter when there's more rainfall and lower during the late summer when the weather is drier. The Cedar River flows into Lake Washington where it is controlled by the locks from in Ballard. It is surprising how many organisms rely on the river for their existence. Algae, and that's one of our organisms, algae can be observed growing in the water as well as water ribbons. So let's look at our pictures at this point and see if we can find algae and see if we can find water ribbons. Those are the first two species and see if you can figure out where they belong. Would they be a producer, a primary consumer, or a secondary consumer or higher? And you can write those species into the table below where they belong. Okay, I'm going to continue reading. On the edge of the water, common reeds and bulrush grow. These are two more species. These are also plants that kind of live along the side of the river. Uh, you may have seen them before if you have been hiking or gone down to the river at all. So please write these two species in the appropriate section of the table below. Water boatmen are observed swimming in the water. They feed on the algae and the reeds. Okay, let's look at the water boatman in the picture. So it's a little bug. It says water boatman right below it. Um, and it says it eats the algae and the reeds. So try to decide where the water boatman might belong in your food web. Would it be a producer, a primary consumer, a secondary consumer, or higher? Remember, you can pause this recording at any time if you need to go back or if you need time to write. Mosquito larvae also eat the algae, while freshwater snails eat both the algae and the water ribbons. So we have mosquito larvae and we have freshwater snails. Please write those in the appropriate space in the table below. A long-necked tortoise, so that would be kind of like a turtle, but a tortoise, pokes its nostrils above the water. The tortoise eats algae too, as well as snails, water boatmen, and yabbies. So the turtle eats the algae along with those other three things. Yabbies are scavengers. They feed on rotting plants and animals and help it to decompose and recycle it back into the food web. So they, let's look at what yabbies are. They look like little tiny lobsters on your paper. And you can try to think about where those might belong in your food web. Would they be producers, primary consumers, or secondary consumers? There are several species of fish, including salmon and trout. These fish, along with frogs, diving beetles, and dragonfly larvae, feed on the water boatmen. 
So that means the water boatmen are food for all those things, the fish, the frogs, the diving beetles, and the dragonfly larvae. Fish and frogs also feed on mosquito larvae. So let's figure out where the fish and the frogs might belong, along with the diving beetles and dragonfly larvae in our food web. These are all things that are on our pictures, so you can see what they look like and how big they are and where you think they might belong. Birds are also often seen along the river. The Pacific black ducks are feeding on fish, dragonfly larvae, and diving beetles, while the occasional pelican feeds on fish, frogs, and dragonfly larvae. So now we're looking at the birds. We have the black ducks and we have the pelicans and we know what they might eat. So let's think about where they might belong in the food chain. Black swans can be beautiful to watch, bending their elegant necks to forage for water ribbons, snails, and fish. The blue heron also likes fish and frogs. The swamp hen can be seen running quickly from the bulrushes where it feeds on the tender new growth and makes its nest. On the riverbank, lizards sun themselves on rocks while occasionally snapping up the dragonflies, diving beetles, and sometimes even small frogs. So we have the blue heron and the lizards, and then we also have the black swans and the swamp hens. These four things can also be found on your picture list. Think about what they eat. Would they be producers? Would they be primary consumers or secondary consumers or higher? Double check your list of animals. Make sure you've included them all in the table below and that they're in the appropriate section. Once you're finished with that and you're sure it's, and you're sure it's correct, you can move on to number two, where you can color, cut, and glue the different species to design your own food web. Use arrows to show the direction of the flow of energy from one species to another, up to, from the producers to the higher orders of the food web. Once you are finished designing your food web, you can go on to the back of this page and answer questions three through eight based on your food web design. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask and good luck.